Hi everyone, welcome to this practical math video on bar model drawing examples. If you haven't learned the basics yet, don't forget to check out our previous video where we talk about how to draw math bar models for simple sentences. Today, we are going to build upon what we have learned and start using the bar model method to solve three common math problem sums that deal with whole numbers. As you can see, drawing the correct model for a math problem can be very useful to us. Not only does it guide us through the thinking process, it also lets us see what's going on in the question better. The first example question that we're going to solve with the math model method is a question that compares the number of items between a few people. Ash bought 3 times as many Pokemon keychains as Thomas. Angela bought 15 less Pokemon keychains than Ash. If the three children had a total of 195 Pokemon keychains, how many Pokemon keychains did Angela have? What kind of model will you draw for this? As we are comparing the number of Pokemon keychains that the children have, we will be drawing a comparison model to help us see the difference between them. How do we do that? Step 1 is to find the people that we are comparing. Looks like we have Ash, Thomas and Angela. That's easy. Now comes the fun part. Step 2 will be to break up the question into shorter sentences and draw the scenarios for each sentence one by one. Let's start with the first sentence. Ash had three times as many Pokemon keychains as Thomas. So remember how to draw this? Whenever we are comparing two people, we have to be clear who has more. In this case, the sentence of Ash having three times as many Pokemon keychains as Thomas means that if Thomas has one unit that represented the number of keychains he had, Ash would have three multiplied by one unit, which is three units. So far so good. Now let's move on to the next sentence. Angela had 15 less Pokemon keychains than Ash. So since we are comparing Angela to Ash, let's look at how many units Ash has. 3, correct? That's why we'll draw 3 units to represent Angela's keychains and subtract this part that represents 15. Since the 15 isn't really there, we are going to draw it with dotted lines to remind us. Finally, we are given that the three children had a total of 195 keychains. What this means is that all the units that we see here add up to give us a total of 195. We are done drawing the model. Look at our masterpiece. It contains the same amount of information as the question and it's much easier to look at. Now that we have our bar model to represent the question, let's see how to use it to solve this math problem. How many Pokemon keychains did Angela have? Looking at the model that we have drawn, what can you tell? This white part doesn't really exist, but if we were to add that amount into the total of 195, can you see that it gives us the value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units? Well, that's a surprise, and a very useful one indeed. We now know that we can find the value of 7 units by adding 15 to 195, and this gives us a value of 210. Since we are solving for the number of Pokemon keychains that Angela had, let's refer to our model again. From the model, we can tell that Angela had 3 units minus 15. Therefore, as long as we can find the value of 3 units, we will be able to get our answer and solve the question. Since we know that 7 units equals to 210, we can easily find the value of 1 unit by taking 210 divided by 7. This gives us 30. Great! Let's make use of that to find 3 units, we'll multiply 30 by 3. Now that we know that 3 units equals to 90, we can find the number of Pokemon keychains that Angela had by taking 90 minus 15. And that's how we get our final answer of 75. Let's try to use the math model method on this next question. This is an example of a question that compares the number of items between two people when one of them decides to share his item with the other. The question reads, Sean and Derek had some flat erasers, Sean had 5 times as many flat erasers as Derek. After Sean gave 24 flat erasers to Derek, both of them had an equal number of erasers. How many flat erasers did both of them have altogether? How would you draw the model to represent this question? Were you able to identify Sean and Derek as the main characters? If you did, great job on the first step. Remember to simplify the question by breaking it into shorter sentences next. Sean had 5 times as many flat erasers as Derek. So who has more flat erasers? Sean, correct? 
So let's start by drawing one unit to represent the number of flat erasers that Derek has. If Derek has one unit, Sean would have one multiplied by five, five units. So far so good. Next, we know that Sean gave 24 flat erasers to Derek. How much of Sean's model represents the 24 erasers? We can't really tell at this point in time, can we? However, as we read on, we know that after the transfer happened, both boys had the same number of erasers. So looking at the model, Sean and Derek had the same number of erasers up to this point, correct? And then the difference is shown by this 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 units here. Since we know that the two boys had the same number of erasers in the end, this must mean that they shared the difference equally. So what's half of 4? Did you get 2? And this is how we figure out that these two units here must represent the 24 erasers that Sean gave Derek. Do you get it? Now let's use our model to solve this question. How many flat erasers did the both of them have all together? We can see from the model that they had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 units in all. Since we already know that 2 units represent 24 erasers, we can find the value of 6 units by multiplying 24 by 3. And this will give us 72 erasers. Another problem solved. Now it's time for the final math question. Again, this is an example of a question that compares the number of items between two people when something happens. This time round, instead of a transfer, both of them gave away a part of what they had. And here's the question. Spidey and Tony had an equal number of lollipops. After Spidey gave away 70 lollipops, and Tony gave away 174 lollipops, Spidey had 3 times as many lollipops as Tony. How many lollipops did Spidey and Tony each have at first? How would you draw the bar model for this? Try this out for yourself, okay? Welcome back. Here we have Spidey and Tony, and they started off with an equal number of lollipops. So let's draw two bars that are the same in length. Next, we know that Spidey gave away 70 lollipops, and Tony gave away 174 lollipops. Okay, when we look at the numbers, the only thing that we know is that Tony gave away more lollipops than Spidey. We could add that portion in and get this. Reading on, we are then given that Spidey had three times as many lollipops as Tony. Uh oh, comparing these two parts, it doesn't look like this is three times of this, correct? Here's a pro tip. For such questions, a better way to draw the model will be to read through the change, leave it for the time being, and draw the model for what happens after the change first. So, let's rewind a little and redo things. After reading this part, we'll leave it for the time being. Then when we see this sentence that says, Spidey had three times as many lollipops as Tony, we're going to think to ourselves, who has more? Spidey. How many times more? three times. The next thing that we'll do is to add this part into the diagram. So we'll start with Tony's leftover lollipops. If he had one unit of lollipop left, Spidey would have three multiplied by one, three units. Now this model is incomplete. We haven't added in the second part yet, remember? But because we are already done with the hard part, we can now add in the lollipops that they gave away quite easily. How did Spidey get from this to this. Spidey gave away 70 lollipops, correct? So this part must be the part that he gave away. And looking at Tony's model, this part must refer to the 174 lollipops that he gave away. As you can see, 174 is more than 70. And this part here is longer. So it looks like our model makes sense. Now that our model is complete, what can we tell? How would you use the model to solve the question? From the model, we can tell that 2 units equals to 174 minus 70, which gives us 104. Therefore, it's quite easy to find the value of 1 unit since we can divide it by 2. And then once we know the value of 1 unit, we will be able to find the number of lollipops that each of them had at first. Looking at the models and comparing them, we could solve our answer in two ways. We can either find the answer by taking the value of 3 units plus 70, or we could do it by taking the value of 1 unit plus 174. Which method would you choose? If you said the second one, that's actually the better choice. Since we already have the value of 1 unit, 
we might as well use that to find the answer, correct? So let's add 52 to 174. This will give us a final answer of 226. Last question now. Congrats on completing these three questions on model drawing. After going through these examples, we hope that you have a better idea of the steps to take to apply your model drawing skills. As usual, thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed. See you later, alligator.